I always stress when we do our sketch of the day that I would like for everyone to draw from observation and less from going to a website and looking at a picture. So for this assignment, I decided that I would like to do a self-portrait drawing from observation. So I want to start off by wishing and hoping that everyone's okay and well staying at home. Uh, we're going to start off by creating a self-portrait from direct observation. We're not going to use photographs. We're going to use a mirror and we're, we're going to draw our portrait just by um, observing some of the objectives of this is simply you're going to study your face by observing. So we're not taking a picture and going by the picture. I see this all the time. Um, I know we're working remotely so I have to trust that you guys are doing this through observing through a mirror. So you probably want to get a bigger mirror than what I have but um, you can use any type of mirror that you have there. So I want you to work from light to dark. You know, plot out the features or plot out different areas to help you create your portrait uh, working very lightly at first. And then as you get the features in, then you're gonna go and figure out where the darkest darks are to the lightest lights and start your shading. As you're going along, you want to stop and look at the mirror accuracy. So you want to go back and forth and kind of look at the paper, look at the mirror, make sure you're looking at yourself and you have everything proportionately done. Make sure that you guys have a full range of values from light to dark. So if you do have a pencil set from the H, the H pencils to your soft or lead pencils, you can use that I am using or what I'm doing right now is just showing you that you can use a regular number two pencil or a HB pencil. Uh, number two pencils are usually HB pencils. Uh, it's right in the middle of the range so if you press firmly down on, on the paper you should be able to get a pretty good dark and uh, your lights could be just let up on the paper for the lights. So presentation wise, make sure that your drawings not scratched up, smudged, has stray marks or tears. Uh, I don't want you guys completing this and uploading a piece of paper that's ripped or smudged. I want you guys to show effort in doing these drawings. So. I don't want you to just give me a little line drawing that took you five minutes. It should take you a pretty long time to do this. I, I mean, for, for myself, it takes a while. I, I'm probably going to do it in two separate parts. Most of, most of the video that I'm going to show, uh, I will be speeding it up. Um, but it will be speeded up so that you don't have to fast forward it or whatever. Page two of the assignment sheet here has the rubric. I want you guys to work at least using a regular letter size paper, eight and a half by 11. And I don't want you to work small. You gotta, you should be able to work using at least um, that eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So yeah, I want you to work bigger. So I have two examples. It shows the shading here, lights and darks. Uh, if you look at the rubric, the objectives on page one, the objectives are here. You can see if it has all of that, then you get a 20. Presentation wise would be different tears, folds, and stray marks and smudges. Specifications, those specifications would be using pencil, using regular 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, and deadlines. So I, I do not want something that is rushed. So if 
I feel like you did it in five minutes, then it will be graded accordingly. That being said, I'm going to start on doing the portrait. Okay, so I have right here, I have my assignment sheet and you can see I can I can see it while I'm working. Make sure I'm hitting the objectives, the presentation and specifications we already have here. So I have my at least eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. I'm using an HB pencil. If you have a whole range of pencils from your hard to soft leads, then you could use that. But I'm just using uh, a number two so that you, um, if you don't have the different pencil weights, you can just use a regular number two pencil. It's in between, so it'll get your darks and lights. I have my mirror here. I'm gonna set it up so that I can view my portrait from direct observation using pencil. Okay. For the, the very beginning, I would like to just map out either, you know, just mapping out lightly. You want to keep looking as you're working on it, keep looking at your mirror. This is about observation. We don't want to we don't want to use photographs. So the problem that I see a lot of students doing is working from photographs. It's not always the best idea to work from photographs. Observing, you, you get way, way more out of it. You're able to understand the way things work. Um, when you're just drawing from photographs, you can just kind of measure things from the edge of the page. So here, we are just rendering through what we see. pretty much drawing what you see and doing less of drawing what you think you see. No one's perfect, especially in the first couple times that you do it. It's all about learning how to observe um, when you're, you're drawing. Just observation is everything. The more that you look as you're drawing, the better that your drawing is going to be. Okay, I changed the position of the camera because I realized after I took a break that you guys couldn't really see too well on some of the, uh, the portion of things that I was working on in the drawing. So now, since I adjusted the camera, you'll be able to see what I am doing a little bit better um, at this point. I have everything planned out and I am going to work on a little bit more of the shading or the, the different values of the drawing. So if I squint, 
I can see. I did change the lighting just a little bit, but when you guys are doing your portraits, um, you want to keep in mind that you want to keep the lighting the same. So you, you're basically just going from, you're just filling in lights and darks and uh, you just want to make sure that you gradually get darker. Just like with your still lifes that we did in the beginning of the year, you want to make sure that you see the contrast of your background, which is very light compared to the color of my skin. So there is shade to every part of my face. It's just that um, there's some areas that are darker um, so and are lighter. So. So this contrast that I get on my face is much darker than my background here. What you're doing is you're constantly looking at the mirror. You're constantly looking at the mirror as you're drawing just for, for checking 
for accuracy um, as you go. You, you want to make sure all these smudges aren't in here. I know that sometimes it's, it's hard for you to control that, but you can always get a piece of paper and then use that as a buffer. Try to add in details as you go along, like once you start getting into it, you could add the details of some textures. Um, you could also, I'm not saying not to use your eraser, but you can use your eraser to bring back some of the highlights. Uh, I could bring back a highlight in the eye here. The more work you put into it, the better it becomes. Uh, I'm not saying that you need to spend a whole week on it, but I'm saying that you need to give it some time. Sometimes you want to walk away from it and come back and see it with, with some new pair of eyes. I haven't done a self-portrait since I was in college, so uh, a little bit out of practice, but at least uh, I am getting kind of getting a little likeness here. <laughs> 